This reflex equipped monitor just has the tool built into it for measuring in-game latency. Remember this thing? Well, bam A photo sense. I remember, and I also remember asking NVIDIA, also nicely, to release it to the public. And while that might not be quite what we've got here today, what we do have is a display that has very similar functionality built right into it. Yes, my friends, this gaming monitor has a function that will tell you the exact delay between when you click the mouse and the photons actually hit your eyes. So we thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Why don't we use it then to see which in-game settings have the biggest impact on our gaming experience? And we're also gonna see the impact of our sponsor, Storyblocks. Save time and money with Storyblocks video. They give you studio quality stock video clips for a fraction of the cost. Check them out today at the link in the video description. An NVIDIA Reflex display, like our ASUS PG259QNR, does exactly what I said in the intro. It measures the latency from the click to the frame actually reaching the display and the muzzle flash actually going. Critically, what it doesn't do is measure the display's latency, which is why we're still calling on NVIDIA to release the LDAT as well. But before we dive in, let's go over how this works. On the back of the display, are USB ports. Now you might think, oh, well this is just a USB hub, like on the non-reflex model of this exact monitor that you guys checked out a while ago. And you would be right, except that if you plug a supported mouse into it, then plug the display's USB output into your PC, like we've done right here, the display will recognize precisely when the mouse button is clicked, in theory, before the PC even receives the signal. It then measures the time between detecting the click, and a change that it monitors on screen. Pretty straightforward so far. But how do we tell the monitor where to look? Will it just monitor the entire image and use like AI to tell if something relevant changes? I mean, yeah, it's NVIDIA, so that's not even impossible to believe in the future, but for now, it's a little bit simpler. What we do is go into the on-screen display, and then we can tell it, hey, turn on the monitoring rectangle. Now this is already right, but let's go ahead and have a look at some of the other options that are in here. You can see you can try a couple of the presets, centered, right-handed, left-handed, according to you know, where you might expect your gun, or especially a muzzle flash to be. You can change the size, do, 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 make it bigger or smaller, and you can also adjust the sensitivity. Once it's tuned, every time we pull the trigger on our firearm, or, or click the mouse, we're gonna see a little millisecond readout in the bottom corner or if it's having trouble figuring out what it's looking at, it'll just show a bunch of X's. So let's dive in and see what our starting latency looks like here. We are running at 640 by 480. I mean, I guess, did we want to start at a best case scenario for latency or a worst case? Well, I guess this is pretty best case. <laughs> All right, so what are we looking at here then? There's, there's a lot of fluctuation and that's normal. 21 milliseconds from click to seeing something happen. That's insane. 23. Like that's from click to pr like all the processing and everything. That's less than a frame at 60 frames per second for something to happen on screen. That's ridiculous. Like it doesn't sound like it's that fast, but it is. But it's really fast. If you're moving, then uh, the different shapes of the muzzle flash, especially if you're like firing really rapidly, yeah. can cause it to misread, I think. All right, what do you want to do next? Uh, we could bump the resolution. Sure, let's bump the rest. 22, 16. 19. 16. That's like a frame at 60 hertz, but like the whole chain. So games that have NVIDIA reflex technology actually have in-engine optimizations to bring this time down. But this reflex equipped monitor just has the tool built into it for measuring in-game latency. We also don't have ultra low latency enabled in the driver either. Really? Well, this is just stock that? settings in the driver, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's do it. That maximum performance! I would not pay extra to have this feature in my monitor. Mm, neither would I. I might. W would you? Why? You could just, like, ugh, especially. Look, when you're dialing in settings for competitive games, 
Yeah, I don't have one of those, Linus. Right, that's fair, but they should just do this for 50 bucks and then you have something you can carry forward with you. Okay, the problem though is that for this to work, you actually do need to like, wire up a thing to your mouse. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, but they could just sell you a mouse for that and then you dial it in and then you use your regular mouse. 24, 30, 37, 30, 26, 24, 31, 19, 21, 25, 24. These kinds of fluctuations are actually really normal. Like you wouldn't normally see them or feel them. No, I can't Because feel like it. all of this kind of stuff is just like happening in the background. And by the time it updates to the screen, the screen is basically doing something else. Your eyes have, are living in the past, more or less. Your eyes are living in the past. Anthony 2020. Next, we need to figure out how to minimize brain lag. Who throws an incendiary grenade? Look at me, I got fireproof feet. I got sandals on, bro. Okay, you know what? Let's see how bad we can make it. Not helping matters right now, or rather helping them, is the fact that Counter-Strike is an esports title and has received significant optimization in this way. Now, you can play games where you can really feel that there's a lot more engine lag, even if you haven't changed anything else, your graphics card, mouse, monitor, etc. I could turn off AA and see what happens. That's always something that has been a perceived difference for me, is that turning on really high levels of anti-aliasing can make some games feel really mushy. Yeah. Hold on a second though. Does that look like a little bit less spikiness? Maybe, yeah. Looks like it's hovering between the 20 to 30 range right now. 17, 29, 25. Like, I don't think I've seen anything significantly higher than 30 yet. Whereas before we were spiking as high as like 40-ish. Yeah, interesting. Okay, maybe anti-aliasing is still bad. By like a few milliseconds. Hey, look, when you want every competitive edge. I mean, that is Nvidia's marketing for this. This is almost definitely a little bit better. Not you, to my feel, feel only because I can look at the numbers, Anthony. I cannot <laughs> feel the difference between those. I was gonna say, like, no, I, no, 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 no. When did you join the esports leagues? Yeah, exactly, right. We could try a lower refresh rate. Um, I don't know how much you care about that, considering if you're buying a 360 hertz monitor, are you gonna lower the refresh rate? No, not unless you're an idiot. <laughs> so. Well, with that said, I don't think it supports ULMB at 360 hertz. Yeah. Uh, it may I think not. It's 240 only. Ooh, there we go. It's a nice dim, nice dim look for the display. <laughs> look, I'm not saying I'm a ULMB hater, David. I'm just saying it's worse and you should feel bad. It's all about DYAC, bro. If you're in a dim room, a dim display doesn't matter. That may be true, but I try to not be my old gamer handle, you know? Closet gamer. I put my whole computer and monitor in my closet. Okay, so let's have a, let's have a looky-loo here. Oh yeah, it's worse. Yeah, that, that is worse. It's definitely worse. You are officially, objectively worse, David. Yeah, get good, scrub. Yeah, not that I would wanna play you, but whatever. 66, I mean, we never saw anything even close to that. Lower hertz, definitely more worse. Okay, confirmed. What's our next project? That's, that's actually kind of crazy, given that it's 240 versus 360. Like, 360 only just became a thing. I know, right? Right? Big difference. Big difference. Does. Somehow. Oh, I know you're getting one of these. I'm going on the record right now. If a 480 hertz monitor doesn't come out in the next year, David will own a 360 hertz monitor. <laughs> now let's play around with a title that actually has NVIDIA Reflex. So NVIDIA Reflex low latency, we're gonna on plus boost. I have no idea what that does. Okay, let's just go on. Let's go vanilla on. We're not gonna use deep learning super sampling. We're just going to run at low and then we're gonna try cranking it to high. Fortnite. Mm, gee, I don't know why this, I have no idea what you're talking about. Fortnite, how about that one? Disgraceful. I could probably write a better search than this. Awesome, Fun fact, speaking of DOS, I actually set up an emulator for a Pentium 1 200 megahertz with MMX. The reason for it is I brought home the Hot Wheels PC and I was like, oh, this sucks, doesn't it? My kids were like, these games are great. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess content's still king. By the way, stay subscribed because maybe we'll do a video about that emulated old PC versus using DOS box versus just getting old hardware. Anthony's wanted to do something like that for a long time. DOS gaming build, constantly on the back burner, still on my shelf. This is a great chair because if I have to go to the bathroom, I don't even have to move. <laughs> I can fix that. <laughs> I didn't ask for that. 
<laughs> LTTstore.com. LTTstore.com. 13.8 milliseconds. And look at the consistency. Yeah. That's the more impressive thing. This isn't really changing at all. Like we're going from like 13 to 15 or 11. Like that's within two or three milliseconds. This, this is nuts. Turn on uh, either reflex plus boost or turn off low latency and see what happens. All right, let's try reflex plus boost. Okay, this seems very similar. Eh, yeah, it might be maybe a little bit more consistent. It seems to more favor the 12 and a half, 13. <laughs> I don't know. That may be placebo. <laughs> I think that's the kind of thing where if you can tell the difference, you're an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty placebo. I think at this high frame rate, we're probably not going to notice a difference. Well, why was CSGO so much slower? So you're saying Fortnite was just already very optimized and all NVIDIA's done is add some branding to it? Uh, it it's probably that it actually just makes more sense at a lower frame rate. Right. That's fair. Okay, so let's turn RTX on. That really does look a lot better. And that's with all the other graphics settings on low. Yeah, I know, right? You know, you could make the argument. I mean, textures, I would want to turn my texture quality up. But other than that, you could probably make the argument for just turning on ray tracing, cranking almost everything else down, and just enjoying that. Look at that soft lighting on his jacket. That looks crazy good. Like, that looks like the shade. And with a more cartoony game like this, like, the flatter look for textures and stuff That's actually great. looks fine. Yeah. Whoa, that is way worse. Yes, we're only at 200 FPS now, um, so I guess that would be why, but turning ray tracing on ain't gonna give you a competitive advantage, that's for sure, bud. It's still consistent though, and that's probably the most important thing. I don't know, I would take 10 milliseconds over ray tracing. Would you take 10 milliseconds over a more stable response time? Mm. No, but it was pretty stable at 10 milliseconds. It was stable before. This, this yeah. game seems ridiculously stable. Yeah. Uh, try with RTX plus uh, Reflex to see what that looks like. It might make up the difference. Okay, there we go. Oh wow, it did actually make up for a lot of it. Yeah, it's not quite where it was, huh. but it's like quite a bit better. Yeah, that's pretty cool. This experience with the product really doesn't make it any easier to recommend for or against it though. On the one hand, it's a $50 to $100 adder on your monitor that doesn't affect performance at all, uh, except that it can help you tune the performance of your system. <laughs> Hold on guys, you're not even gonna talk about the coolest part? Come on! The latest beta for GeForce Experience gives you a whole bunch of performance metrics to gawk at, check it out. Not only does it show you GPU performance stats and let you adjust power targets on the fly, it also integrates directly with the NVIDIA Reflex Latency Analyzer built into the display. Here's how it works. Up top, we've got two stats that everyone should be able to get regardless of the display. Render present latency is how long it takes a frame to get from being rendered to being sent to the display while render latency is how long it takes to actually render the frame. Now, if we turn on latency monitoring in our monitor's OSD and wait a couple seconds, bam, check that out. Even more good stuff. This is a list of all the latency information that the monitor is collecting. We've got the exact location of the monitoring rectangle. We've got the system plus display latency, same as what the monitor's OSD shows us. And if we've got a compatible mouse like this ROG Shockram, we've got mouse click and total system latency, which is nearly as accurate, if not just as accurate, as LDAT. What does it mean for a mouse to be compatible with the reflex latency analyzer? Two things, a validation database and firmware. NVIDIA is compiling a list of average click latencies for existing mice in order to make as many of them compatible as possible. But some mice are able to capture the exact moment a click is registered in firmware and transmit it to the display on each click. NVIDIA is launching with support for the 30 most popular esports mice on ProSettings.net with per click latency reporting supported on the ROG Shockram, on the ROG Shockram Core, Razer Death Adder Pro, and SteelSeries Rival 3. 
So if you don't have one of the supported mice, then you still get the GeForce Experience performance overlay stats just without mouse latency added in. To get accurate results at home, you'll need to make sure that you get at least 20 samples of data, like 20 clicks, and try to find a dark background where a change in brightness will show up well. Muzzle flashes like that, and anything else that's instant when you click should do nicely. And that's it. Back to our regularly scheduled Linus. I still prefer it as a standalone thing that you could carry forward with you to future monitors rather than built into it, but I think the value of it from just a, a tuning and optimizing perspective is definitely there. Yeah, I think it would actually make a lot more sense if you, as the center of your ring of friends, decide to cart your monitor around and straight up optimize each one of their machines right. for a little profit that uh, that might actually <laughs> Or you could just be a good friend, <laughs> you know, and help that center person buy it so they don't have to use well, their okay, money. Well, okay, okay, okay. You've got an eSports team. You've got a bunch of these monitors, but you only want to spend the extra money on one. Yeah, that makes sense. So you go through and you, you set up all the different machines sure. and they all have the same settings and you're good to go. Or one person buys this monitor, posts the results on Reddit, and then everyone just uses those same settings. Yeah. Hey, there it is. All right, so one of you, go ahead and buy it. The rest of you just get the one without the extra module nonsense. Speaking of nonsense, it's never nonsense when I transition to our sponsor. Storyblocks gives you studio quality video clips for a fraction of the cost. You can download all the stock video your heart desires from their member library, including HD and 4K footage, After Effects templates, motion backgrounds, and more. We actually use it quite a bit here on TechQuickie. And all the content is royalty free for both commercial and personal projects like YouTube videos. New clips are added regularly, so there's always something fresh to download. And you can check out our link below to get Storyblocks today. If you enjoy this type of video where we're tweaking and optimizing things, maybe check out our video on One Us Must CTR utility. It lets you take your Ryzen processor and just get more performance out of it for free.